Locke and Key follows the titular Locke family whose patriarch Rendell is murdered by the teenage Sam Lesser. Rendell's wife Nina and their children Tyler, Kinsey, and Bodie relocate to the old Locke home, known as Key House, in the small town of Matheson. The children soon discover that the house is filled with hidden magical keys that each possess their own unique powers and that adults, including their mother Nina and Uncle Duncan, can't seem to remember the magic after witnessing it. Some of the notable keys include the Anywhere key, which allows you to travel to any destination you've seen before, the Head key, which allows you to go inside your own mind to access memories, and the Identity key, which allows the user to change their appearance. Bodhi first uses the keys to free a mysterious woman named Echo trapped in a well house, but quickly discovers that he's been tricked. Echo is actually a villainous character known as Dodge, who wants to collect all of the keys for a sinister plan. And so Bodhi tasks himself with finding and protecting the various keys around Key House. Tyler supports Bodhi's mission to protect the keys and mostly stays away from using them himself. Instead, he focuses on adjusting to his new small town social life and strikes up a relationship with his crush, Jackie. Kinsey becomes friends with a group of filmmakers known as the Savini Squad and quickly finds herself in a love triangle between the good-natured Scott and fellow new kid Gabe, who encourages her to use the various keys magic for her own benefit. Kinsey uses the head key to remove her own fear, personified as a rabid version of herself, and buries it. She also uses the music box key to humiliate her rival, Eden. As the Locke children uncover more secrets about the keys and their father, Dodge is out in the world orchestrating her villainous plan. She is unable to take the keys from the Locks herself, so she needs a willing partner to help her. It's then revealed that it was Dodge that had called out to Sam Lesser and manipulated him into murdering Rendell. She then breaks Sam out of prison so he can go to Key House and retrieve the head key. He holds the Locke family at gunpoint, just as he had done before, but this time Tyler is able to get through to him and make him question Dodge's manipulative ways. And that's when Dodge shows up to stab Sam and steal the head key from him. Before Sam succumbs to his stab wound, he accidentally uses the ghost key and has his ethereal form separated from his body, unbeknownst to everyone else. Dodge also manipulates Rindle's old friend Ellie by posing as her deceased boyfriend Lucas. Dodge then forces Ellie to befriend Nina so she can steal the mysterious Crown of Shadows from Key House. When the Locke children confront Ellie about her involvement with Dodge, a guilt-ridden Ellie reveals everything. When they were younger, Rendell and his friends had opened the mysterious black door hidden in the nearby sea caves. Upon opening it, several demonic bullets flew out of the door, with one of them striking and possessing Lucas. Lucas then killed two of their friends before Rendell killed him. Rendell, Ellie, and their remaining friends staged the deaths as accidental drownings and split up the keys to be hidden and never used again. And that was all going well until a few months ago when a still grieving Ellie used the Echo Key to try to bring back Lucas. What she ended up bringing back was Dodge, the evil spirit that had possessed Lucas, and that was the decision that set in motion the events of the series. Dodge then arrives at Key House to confront the Locke children and steal the Omega Key in order to unlock the Black Door. Using the crown, Dodge summons an army of shadows that the Locke children must defeat. After Bodhi uses the Matchstick Key to destroy Dodge's shadow, the Locke children find her unconscious body. And since Dodge was a demonic spirit that had come from the Black Door, it only made sense that that was where they needed to take her to be rid of her for good. And so the Locke kids, alongside their friends, Friends Scott, Gabe, Jackie, and Eden take Dodge's body down to the sea caves to throw it through the black door. And thus, the Locke family were free to live happily ever after. And then comes the twist. Ellie hasn't been seen since Dodge's death and her son Rufus is sent off to live with his aunt and uncle. It turns out that Dodge had used the identity key on Ellie to look like Dodge and planted her unconscious body in Key House for the Locke children to find. And so it was actually Ellie that they had thrown through the black door. And Dodge, well, it's also revealed that she has secretly been posing as Gabe all season long. And now that Gabe was dating Kinsey, Dodge had an even firmer manipulative grasp on the locks. 
And Dodge won't be the only problem for the Locke family moving forward as it's also revealed that one of those demonic bullets had escaped from the black door and possessed Eden, meaning there were now two demonic entities to deal with. I just want to cut in real quick and tell you about this video sponsor, NordVPN. Are you worried about finding a new show to watch after you finish binging the final season of Lock and Key? With NordVPN, you can change your internet's virtual location and you can browse Netflix libraries from different countries. Different regions have different streaming libraries. So if you switch your location to somewhere like the UK, you can watch hit shows like The Office, Friends, or Rick and Morty all on Netflix without signing up for another streaming service. Personally, I'd recommend watching Better Call Saul. If you're in the US like me, you'll have to wait a full year for the final season of Better Call Saul to hit Netflix. So good luck avoiding all the finale spoilers. But with NordVPN, I just change my internet's location and I can go straight to streaming. So don't sign up for another streaming service. Sign up for NordVPN. And the streaming thing is just the cherry on top of all of NordVPN's other great features. NordVPN also protects and encrypts your personal and private data, so you can go online with no risk of annoying ads, trackers, or malware. It's also the fastest VPN on the market, so you don't have to worry about internet speeds or throttling. So sign up for my exclusive deal at nordvpn.com slash chilltv for a great deal on your new subscription. It's risk-free, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, link is in the description. Now let's get back to the recap. In Season 2 of Lock and Key, the Lock family is trying their best to live normal lives, unaware of the danger that Gabe and Eden posed. Nina gets a job working at Matheson Academy, where she begins a relationship with the history teacher Josh Bennett. Meanwhile, Bodie befriends Josh's daughter Jamie, who owns a dollhouse replica of Key House. Bodie discovers that if he used the small world key, anything that happened in the dollhouse also happened in Key House. So for example, if a regular sized spider crawled into the dollhouse, a massive spider would appear in Key House. Tyler is still dating Jackie, whose 18th birthday is fast approaching, meaning she would soon forget about the magic of the keys. This prompts Tyler and Kinsey to visit their father, Rendell's high school girlfriend, Erin, who had been catatonic since her experience with the Black Door decades prior. Using the head key, Tyler and Kinsey discover that Erin had been trapped inside her own mind. Upon freeing her, Erin regains consciousness. Erin informs them that adults can remember magic with the use of the memory key. Upon finding the memory key, Tyler uses it on his uncle Duncan, who finally remembers his magical childhood and that he had the ability to craft his own magical keys. When Tyler offers to use the memory key on Jackie, she refuses, thinking it best to leave the magic in the past and move on. Kinsey begins to mistrust Gabe as he tries to drive a wedge in her friendship with Scott by using the music box key to manipulate them. And she had good reason to mistrust Gabe as he was secretly the villainous Dodge, working alongside the possessed Eden. The two villains set up a base in a cabin in the woods and begin collecting a material known as Whispering Iron to create their own magical keys. Unfortunately for them, they didn't possess the power to create their own keys. Upon learning that Duncan could make keys, Gabe sets his sights on him. As Kinsey's suspicions of Gabe and Eden grow, she and Scott use the head key on Eden where they discover that Eden was a demon and that Gabe was in fact Dodge. The Lock children then realize that Dodge had tricked them into throwing their father's friend Ellie through the black door instead of the villainous demon. As the Locks try to come up with a plan to defeat Gabe, Erin takes matters into her own hands, confronting the demon for the death of her high school friends. Gabe overpowers Aaron and murders her. When the Locks attempt to defeat Gabe, he outplays them, threatening to kill Bodhi to force Duncan to craft the demon key. With this new key, Gabe could use it to turn his victims into demon slaves. As Gabe amasses a demon army, including a possessed Jackie, Duncan helps Tyler create the Alpha Key, which would remove the demon from a person's soul. Tyler uses the key on Jackie, which dispels the demon, but ultimately kills her. Heartbroken, Tyler becomes more resolved in his quest to defeat Gabe. Meanwhile, history teacher Josh begins looking into his ancestor Frederick Gideon, a British captain in the Revolutionary War. In the 1700s, Gideon raided Key House 
Force, which at the time was being used to build and hide weapons for the American army. After killing Peter Locke, the original builder of Key House, Gideon fled to the sea caves where he discovered a portal to another dimension. Both Gideon and a fellow soldier were possessed by a demon from the portal before being captured by the American militia and hanged for their crimes. Another Locke ancestor, Benjamin Locke, crafted the Black Door and Omega Key to seal the portal and contain the evil demons within. In the present, Eden has grown tired of being Gabe's puppet and plots to build her own demonic army to turn against him. She tricks Josh into obtaining the Omega Key and following her to the Black Door under the guise of teaching him more about his ancestor Gideon. As Eden and Josh reach the Black Door, Gabe arrives to stop them and uses the crown of shadows to cause a cave-in. Eden manages to escape, and Bodie and Jamie arrive to rescue Josh, who soon forgets his magical experience due to being an adult. Unbeknownst to them, the cave-in also opened the black door allowing Ellie, still looking like Dodge, to finally escape. As the season comes to a close, Duncan discovers that being the creator of the Demon Key gave him the power to control the demons. He turns the army against Gabe, who is also confronted by Tyler and Kinsey. While Gabe and Kinsey fight, Tyler uses the Alpha Key to kill him, defeating the villainous demon Dodge once and for all. Following Dodge's defeat, the original Lucas returns as an Echo and is reunited with his high school love, Ellie, who is restored to her true form. Following their victory, Tyler departs on a road trip, choosing not to use the memory key on himself in the hopes of living a normal life and forgetting his heartbreak over Jackie. Kinsey and the Savini squad throw a send-off party for Scott, who accepts a scholarship to study in England. And Bodie reveals to Nina that she could remember magic by using the memory key. But it's not exactly all happy endings, as the still-possessed Eden uses the Echo Key to summon Captain Frederick Gideon. While Eden thinks that they could work together to reopen the portal to the Demon Dimension, Gideon instead betrays Eden and tosses her headfirst into the well, before escaping to pursue his own nefarious plans.